that you bless this day. Amen. We ask, O oh God, that you bless this moment. Amen. We ask, O oh God, that you bless our endeavors. Amen. And that everything we shall do today shall bring glory to your name. Amen. O oh Lord God Almighty, this is a significant happening in this university. Anglican and Baptist primary schools at Ijebode. He subsequently proceeded to one of the foremost schools in, in the Nigeria of those days, Ijebode Grammar School, for his secondary and higher secondary school education. At the University of Lagos, for his BSc, Political Science degree, Baba Femi enjoyed the Western State Bursary and Federal Government Merit Scholarship. He finished top of his class in 1976 with a second class upper division, which also earned him, you can clap, the Chancellor's Award. He actively participated in student unionism and was elected the University of Lagos Students' Union Public Relations Secretary in 1974-75 session. Upon completing his NYSC, he returned to Unilag to work as a graduate assistant. As a beneficiary of the visionary policy of late Professor J.F. Ajay Ajay to train academic manpower anywhere in the world for Unilag. He proceeded on a fully funded scholarship to political science, you to study here. political you science at the University of California, Los Angeles, in September 1978. The Bafemi Vanager obtained a PhD in political science in June 1982 inclusive of the Master of Arts in Philosophy. In spite of a two-year diversion for national service and one-year pre-training leave, leave service at Unilag, his PhD was attained at age 27. In between these competing academic commitments, he found time to support the worldwide anti apartheid campaign while at UCLA as a student and continued into the early years of 1990s. In 1982, Professor Badinger returned to his classroom commitment as a lecturer too at Unilag, despite all the enticing opportunities for a stay back in the USA. He attained the status of a senior lecturer in 1986. In, in the sheer quest for knowledge, he obtained a Bachelor of Law degree from the University of Lagos in January 1990, winning the Abiola Ojo Best Student Award and Taslim Elias Award. He became a legal practitioner in December 1990 after attending the Nigerian Law School. Professor Badijo was appointed by the Nigerian government as a special assistant to General Olusegun Obasanjo in the general's bid for election as the UN Secretary General from October to November 1991 and participated as a Nigerian delegate at the 46th UN General Assembly. Badijo was in 19 the first African invited to be part of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, on its flagship annual human development report, and was part of the team that put together the UNDP International Human Development Report for 1993 and 1994, and consulted on South African Human Development Report in April 1995. Professor Badi just started work at the UN Operations for Somalia, UNISOM, 
in May 1993 on a leave of absence from Unilion. In 1996, he officially served his employment with Unilion for a career with the UN for 23 years and 10 months. He served the Guinea-Bissau and Darfur Sudan. He retired on the 1st of March 2017 as head of the political affairs section UNAU mission in Darfur. Some of the other previous roles he held in the United Nations include Chief of Staff, Joint Mediation Support Team, Deputy Special Representative of the UN Sec Secretary General, UN Political Office for Somalia, Office in Charge, Disarmament, Demobilization and Demining Division, United Nations Operation in Somalia. These roles saw him give major advisory support to the United Nations in the pursuit of peace through dialogue on many mediation efforts and reconciliation conferences in many countries. In the course of his service with the UN, he built leadership and mediation expertise for, from some programs, such as the UNITA to enhance conflict prevention and peace building in Africa, ICRC, International Humanitarian Law Course, as well as leadership development program in 2008 in New York. Today, Professor Badejo wears a number of caps in his commitment to serve humanity. He is referred to as Prakademics. I think we should note that. He is referred to as a Prakademics. Demi, being a renowned, highly experienced academic who combines research and cooperative and international political economy with vast hands-on practices of peace and security, development and humanitarian affairs. He is a member of the Nigerian Bar Association. He obtained certification in mediation and was a member of the Lagos Multi-Door Courthouse Panel of Neutrals. He has extensive experience in academics at the University of California, Los Angeles, the University of Lagos, and briefly with the University of Medjugorje, Nigeria. With almost 17 years at the University of Lagos, he taught and mentored many successful students and undertook research on many issues. He was appointed the first professor at Christland University at Beogutai and assumed duty, duties on March 11, 2021. He is currently the head of the Department of Political Science. And I want to say he headed both the Department of Political Science and International Relations of Christland University until very recently. Professor Badijo considers the amelioration of leadership deficit, corruption, and external dynamics around which Africa is operating as very critical for the development of Africa. Beyond his pan-Africanist interests, beyond um, his pan-Africanist interests, he believes in a just and equitable world for all. He served as strategic advisor to the office of the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain from September 2018 to November 2020 and, uh, and was part of the Bahraini delegation to the UN General Assembly for two consecutive years and supported the Bahrain Visions Forum Dialogue among world leaders. So Badiger is a public speaker of international repute. In 2018, he spoke at the Bahrain Visions Forum on the UN General Assembly. In 2019, he spoke in Addis Ababa, Dakar, Johannesburg, and Lagos, AU, and UN meetings. 
He, is also, he, he also spoke at the Oslo Speak Center, Norway, in June 2019, and the Bled Strategic Forum in 2019. On April 1, 2017, Dr. Badejo assumed office as the founder and chief executive and lead consultant, consultant at Yenta Strategy Consults, YSC, which was incorporated in early 2017. And from there, he joined Christland University. Professor Badejo is a renowned professor of political science and international relations who has contributed immensely to the academic world with over 48 publications. These include books such as team publications, mod, um, these include books, sorry, team publications, referred articles, monographs, and chapters in books, as well as other major research work in progress. He contributed to the academic world by attending the UN Resident Coordinator Assessment Center in March 2002 and passed and passing in the first category without reservation. Baba Femi Badejo is a Nigerian academic who has written extensively on the topic of corruption in Africa. Professor Badejo enjoys excellent relationship with world leaders, including senior advisor to the current president of Timor Lesse, and Nobel Laureate, His Excellency Jose Ramos Horta, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, as well as Shaikh Yusam bin Essa, Al Khalifa, immediate past president of the Court of the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Professor Badijo is married to Mrs. Adejumoke Badijo a union of 45 years. The couple incorporated the Limited in 1989. Professor Badejo and his wife are blessed with four children, Mrs. Adeyinka Abosede Shanogo, Mrs. Adetokombo Oluwatobi Shodia, Mr. Adebola Oluwadan Oluwademilade Badejo, and Mrs. Abidemi Uluwatamilola Ayodele. Welcome the inaugural lecture, lecture. And on this note, I declare open. It's a great pleasure for me to have to address the first inaugural um, uh, lecture 001 of Christland University. I stand on all ex uh, existing protocols um, as I commence with the lecture, but the commencement of the lecture starts with a prelude before the introduction. My debts are humongous. My mother, Madame Lydia Ajoke Badejo Dada, a petty food vendor, constantly regretted how circumstances robbed her of access to Western education. My father, Mr. Albert Badejo Dada, a tailor and bicycle renter lived with the disappointment that he wrongly opted out of school too early as a result of poverty. Both, united with strong purpose, resolved that traditional, or if you like, Baba Femi, would acquire Western education. Those who know me know that I started off as a Deshino and then became registered as my other name, Baba Femi. This task became easier. The task of my 
uh, having Western education became easier as the Obafemi Awolowo led self government of Western Nigeria blazed the trail on compulsory free primary education at about the period of my birth. Failing to qualify for admission into a Jagode Grammar School in 1966, I probably was too young, I spent a year at Ibefun with my mother's cousin, Mrs. Aderi Ike Ibrahim, who was a great school teacher for more pushing to enter the premier secondary school in Ijebu province. Secondary level education involved payments, even if considered minimal, uh, but they were significant for petty food sales, tailoring, or bicycle rentals. And all these actually over time failed. It was through the late engineer Jubril Andu that my father became a daily paid worker at the Western Region's Public Works Department. He was always fatigued every evening, and I saw it, but persevered for some months until he became a water rate bill distributor for the Western Region, later becoming West, uh, Western State Water Corporation. Mom continued waking up at about 4.30 a.m to cook meals that she and I sold to realize some proceeds to contribute to housekeeping. This was when I was in the secondary school. And really interesting was that I had a girlfriend and that girlfriend left me because I was not proud that I was selling my rights. She was more, she was superior in maturity, and she told me, why did you have to run away? And um, that was the story that Shesu uh, Akishala uh, wants to tell, but I tell it myself. The other, part, uh, the, the other part of the money from my secondary school attracted a third contributor, my only maternal uncle, Olabo De Adesoya. Delays in gathering the total sum normally led to interest-free loans and one of those people was my teacher, British, Anthony John Finch, and a mentor, which we those days styled school father. Um, and he also taught me the, the practical orientations that I have, especially the inquisitive mind. The Onogodu family had more resources such that their children, Rotimi, Ronke, Lit, Sister Ronke, and Bukola as neighbors, shared some with me. I had access to electricity to study with them and even watch the news on television. Um, uh, Pastor Adetola can testify to the fact that we used lantern those days. As neighbors, I had access to electricity, a borrow TV also, as well as late Vincent Ikechuku Oza, as my seniors, donated their previously used books to take care of the poverty that I faced. What I lacked in terms of materials was pushed into me on the issue of being an Omoluabi, and prim primary in that respect was Chief Emmanuel Alaba, my mother's uncle, who was known as Happy Man, a poor tailor, but integrity personified. Let Reverend Later Canon N. E. Ade Oshisoya led my school, and several of the people um, uh, 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 impacted a lot towards being my persona of today. Moving away from home, I had a last minute admission in 1973 into Unilag because that was the time there was a school change, the school year change, and um, I then was offered admission. But by that time, I had, for the first time, had freedom. Freedom to be in a room of my own at Shagamu, where I was a school teacher. I never had a room before that time and I wasn't going to give that freedom up to go to the university. 
my mother's cousin, late Samuel Adenola Alaba, though not much schooled himself, refused to endorse my decision. He convinced my dad, and I was willingly dragged out of Shagam to Lagos, where he called a family meeting of my maternal relations to reinforce his decision that I must go to school right away. I'm also grateful to Omoba Shegun Omolayo, a brilliant third year student of political science who provided me soft landing on arrival at Unilag by sharing knowledge, encouraging me not to be afraid about statistics. I've always been very bad with figures. And um, with all the support, I was able to graduate comfortably. My youth service was in Ikorekwene, in um, and it was fun. August 1, 1977, I returned to Unilag, as has been mentioned, and uh, the Unilag gave the money, the loan, the loan with which I was able to acquire my first Ijapa, which was the Volkswagen 1500. I could have bought a Peugeot or any of those, but I preferred the Volkswagen, unlike my friend, uh, Professor Durodi, who had the taste for very special cars those days. You're welcome, Duro. <laughs> With my girlfriend being pregnant from the celebration of my convocation in January 1977, <laughs> I got married to my heart club, Aneju Moke, who has remained a pillar of strength and has put a, a lot of lifelong sacrifice into our family. Happy birthday to my dearest. Today is my wife's 67th birthday. We had a little later, uh, and of course, it's important for me to point out that my car cost 3,600 naira. And 3,600 naira was about the cost of um, uh, uh, what a university, a fresh graduate will earn in a year. But look at it today. Ask yourself, is, is a lecturer can never have his year salary to buy anything come near a car. Maybe he can buy a motorcycle. That shows the extent to which our nation has been devalued. We'll talk about that later. Um, so I went to UCLA, and I am extremely grateful to people like Dr. Benjamin Amuno, Ghanaian, late, um, Professor La, uh, 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 DVC, uh, Professor, late Professor Jacob Festus Ade Ajayi, uh, and as well as Dr. H.O.O. Poka, who welcomed me into the United States. The day I was arriving, I was afraid that if I got out of the airport, JFK, I could be shot at in terms of the things that one had read before. But Dr. Poker was waiting to receive me. I went on to do political economy, and um, uh, the, the, the rest is a, a, a lot of history, which you can find in the um, uh, a book that is available. But in terms of my returning to academics, uh, I feel extraordinarily grateful to two late professor friends of mine, uh, and one actually was a father, Professor Oyeleye Oyediron and Professor Adeoye Akisoya. But two are still very much alive, and they are in the audience. Professor Ade Pukoyi, the first Nigerian to read French out of UI. Thank you, sir. And Professor Funsho Akere of English, former Vice Chancellor uh, Akumba, Pro Chancellor currently. Both of them were on my back on when are you going to go and become a professor? 
you have enough that it takes. But I was not interested. I was not interested because it, that's it. That would be in my uh, 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 biography. Why I did I, I didn't show interest initially, but uh, invariably um, I, I came here. Um, then providence. COVID-19 descended on us. It ended many of my consultancies. The Prime Minister of Bahrain, who I was consulting for, unfortunately died within the period. Um, he is, uh, the president of his office had to retire for his younger uh, brethren. So much changed about my multilateral diplomacy. And um, uh, as a result, I discussed with a friend of mine that maybe I should go back to the university as things are going. Um, uh, uh, and invariably, Ambassador Julius Ajasa Shodikpe, my friend since our younger days at Gege Ekotedo, Ekotedo Yaloba, uh, Yalobe in Ibado, uh, from about 1973, said that he wanted me to come to Abel Kuta and that uh, I shouldn't, you know. He took my visa, uh, my CV, came to Professor Chinedum Peace, Babalola, our visionary VC, uh, a person of intellect, award winner, recognized by several institutions around the world, including the uh, uh, African Union that gave her the foremost award that the African Union gives in terms of knowledge to people with respect to knowledge. I must acknowledge the visionary contribution of Mama, I Chief Winifred Adefolaho Awoshika. You all call it Awoshika. It's Awoshika. I would not do evil. Jason is nodding that I'm correct. Um, so, I'm acknowledging her and feel proud to be associated with this institution because Mama started with crutch in her uh, living room and teaching as far back as 1977. And she built all through the uh, uh, Priestland group of schools from which this university came and which group of schools support this university. In effect, I am associating with a university that is not like many of the private universities that are proceeds of corruption. Of course, I uh, thank my wife, my children. My children have been fantastic in going through the things I write in some cases helping in rendering it into more uh, understandable forms and of course my indefatigable special assistant or in fact special advisor mr abraham amen who has remained with me since 2017 with professor kuko yi and Dakere, we are going to give a lecture and professor Butu Ashe also one of my seniors uh, who is also here. We are going to give a lecture, and at the end of the lecture, the young man came to me with, can I have your uh, uh, phone number? And I gave it, I uh, thought that was the end. The next thing, he said he didn't get the posting he wants to NIA, could he work with me? I said, okay, fine, if you want to. And we have remained together ever since. <coughs> well, um, let me thank everybody uh, especially the pro-chancellor, my friend, who I expected to be here today, Professor Olukoju. We date back to the days at Unilad, Professor Ni and Po. Um, and uh, the council that he heads, as well as the board of trustees, and of course, the senate of this university. My dean, the best of all deans. I know that my friend, my friend Professor Moiti is, is, is not too happy, but that's the truth. You are my friend, he is my team, and uh, uh, Professor um, uh, 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 Akimbo Bola. 
And of course, perhaps my very best friend since 1986, as far as this university is concerned, Professor Olufemi Onobaju. Baba with the color. Um, as well as all my academic colleagues who have been fantastic, um, you know, uh, uh, my friend, uh, uh, the, the guru of just rights, um, uh, Ayo, Adeli Wale, uh, I, thank, I thank you. I thank Professor Lassisi. Professor Lassisi is extremely dear to my heart. Um, Professor Lassisi is my, uh, almost my father from Odo Shenlu, where is my state of origin. In my country, everything of origin is Odo Shenlu, Ribosa, and Professor Lassisi had been vice chancellors of two universities, um, the one in Uyo, the Federal University there, as well as the pioneer for Crescent University. I thank you. I see uh, 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 by you and some other people from our country. Um, uh, thanks a lot uh, for for coming. There are so many people I'm not able to go through. From Mikoka Unita, you know the people that I. Okay, let me go to the lecture. In any case, um, I entered my class in Theories of International Relations on December 6, 2022. I was to teach the students about national interest. And I thought even before talking about national interest, let me ask them, what are your individual respective uh, interests. Um, by the way, I do have a friend all the way from my neighborhood, um, uh, who we were together in the bushes of Darfur, where we escaped kidnapping, uh, occasionally gunshots uh, as part of life. But all that would be in my biography. Um, yes. Uh, Theories of international relations, and ask them about their respective interests. It was interesting, and you will find what they told me when you read the uh, lecture. One says, is to finish this school with good grades, and start my business. Uh, another says, make money. Uh, make money uh, to have a first class to sing with Davido, Bonner Boy, and Ed Sheeran, to have access to any type of food. One says to be making money to be a businessman and to be famous. To, the another one to make good money by all means and also have the respect I deserve. Make money by all means. What actually told me put some money into my bank account and he gave me the number of the account and I went to check the number and I know who it was but okay I will hide that um, so I was a bit surprised that they were not able to understand um, what interests involved and I decided that I was going to incorporate what they have said but I had difficulties in defining interests myself. Because part of the problem that we face as Nigerians uh, or Africans in general is that our thinking has been altered and we are not able to conceptualize in our own language, uh, uh, our respective languages anymore. As a result of that, there are difficulties in really understanding. So I approached two friends when I was battling with what is interests. I approached two friends, um, uh, Dr. Femi Akekugwe, who retired from the University of Lagos a while ago and became, was singing, she always sang, and Sheson Ekishola on what 
constitutes interest in Yoruba. Now, uh, I summarized it all at the end of the day because it was not also easy for them. One says, I'm funny. Uh, I will challenge all of you to think about, at the end of the lecture, to think about what are interests. What would you call interests in your own mother tongue if you can still conceptualize along that line? So, um, but the, the solution that I finally had after looking at um, uh, uh, Wikipedia, Google, and searching all over uh, was from Um, it doesn't look like this. Um, well, okay, I was saying that the, whatever my students were saying re uh, uh, relates to the problem we face in our society in general. Uh, but, okay, in terms of dealing with uh, the needs of man uh, or hu human beings in general, we first of all must note that we all want to be alive. Um, somebody was offered one million dollars and said, I'm happy to take it. And said, what if I make it 10? Said, yes, that would be great, 100. Fantastic. That's even fine enough. Just keep that. So well, there is a condition. So what is the condition? The condition is you will not wake up tomorrow. Say so no, I don't want. It. So being alive becomes very, very fundamental. But in the process of being alive, I in the lecture have identified that uh, three things are crucial: air, water, and food. In that order air, water, and food, because these ones allows us to be free, to have freedom from asphyxiation, asphyxiation, dehydration, and hunger. These are important interests for mankind. These interests constitute fundamental freedoms that are crucial for the realization of the right to life. In the case of in the case of air, it takes less than ten minutes. Um, the uh, uh, what? George Floyd. George Floyd demonstrated that to us that uh, when he was saying, "I can't breathe, I can't breathe," he was over in about nine minutes, a few seconds. Um, in the case of water, uh, uh, that was demonstrated by Bobby Sands uh, uh, of the IRA and food. Uh, but these are crucial, they are core for the individual. But, but there are several other things that are crucial for the individual to be human. Um, uh, if it is just the other and food, then we'll be like animals. Animals are able to get that too. But we now require several other uh, 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 things in terms of uh, being alive. So, uh, Aristotle, in his uh, book Politics, had pointed out that man is a political animal. So we do need to be associated with one another um, in order to deal with individual interests. I, I identified different levels of interests. There is the individual in level, which deals with individual interests. And I told the story of uh, the individual interests um, uh, 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 with even some of my own life experience and 
in the uh, in, in the lecture. Um, and I just mentioned to you Bobby Sands. Bobby Sands, a member of the Provisional Irish Republican Army, led a hunger strike while incarcerated at the HM prison maze in Northern Ireland. Uh, he and his nine other hunger strikers fasted to death, thereby further popularizing their quest. Um, Sands refused food from March 1, 1981, and progressively emaciated uh, uh, before he died um, April 9. March 1, April 9, you will be dead without food. So he demonstrated that uh, in 66 days, um, if you still were having access to water, you could be alive, but not beyond that. Uh, but in the case of uh, uh, water, it snatches within 8 to 21 days. So these are core interests of human beings. Um, well, I, I did ask some uh, knowledgeable friends about what are interests. The response from Professor Ade Ibiwoye, um, one of my friends at the Afoka Axis. Great Afokites! Great Afokites! Great, 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 great! So, uh, the, our president is here. Uh, Ade Ibiwoye suggested that uh, interest in my little understanding is the Peking child. He was doing it in teaching, which is quite great, brought into being by an amount of money or effort, ETC, that was invested. The bigger the amount, the bigger the Peking. My son-in-law, who is the UN resident coordinator for Madagascar, also goes along this line to say that the interest we pay for getting a loan or the reward granted to the one who lent money. However, I would like to quickly note that this dimension of interest, as put forward by Biwoye and Salogo, needs to be singular and incomplete until one adds a rate. The word rate is important. But the in, in my dealing with all these, I finally settled with the response from late Ambassador Eloho Otobo, one of the fantastic Nigerians that um, uh, said, but he's late. He suggested to me that when we talk about interest, uh, it is something that is of great value for or likely to affect you. Our mama just entered and we welcome our chancellor. Hi, Chief Winifred Adefolaho Awoshika. Yeah. Um, so it's um, now in trying to conceptualize interest, I wish I had the capacity to have learned more about Oromila's Ifa. But my intention as I was finishing graduate school was to use the knowledge that is available in Ifa in addition to all other sources of knowledge, but unfortunately, I have fa I failed so far to join Professor Sophie Oluwale, late professor uh, of philosophy at Unilag, who spent a lot of time in trying to make sense of some of these uh, uh, received knowledge that we have. And of course, I've spoken about earlier on about whether um, I've, I've spoken earlier on about uh, whether we uh, uh, have Amfani, Inifesi, and all the rest of it. So, interest at the national level 
as well as interests at the global level are all what I have uh, spent quite a reasonable portion of my career on. Um, my uh, PowerPoint is. Well, um, my time is short. I don't, I'm not able to read everything, but uh, let's talk about national interests. Having defined what interest is at the individual level, there is then interest at the family level. Uh, every family is uh, made up of uh, father, mother, and children, and within that is where politics starts. Many a time when people talk about politics, people react with, uh, oh, I'm not a politician, I don't want to. No, politics is the extent to which you are putting forward your interests, what you will have to have, want to have, what you need in um, so society. Uh, and at the family level, this is where it begins before it goes into groups. Different groups in society um, uh, 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 make up as, as well, aside from groups, you also have um, uh, uh, classes, and within classes, uh, there are divisions, but the, all these are necessary to make up what is national interest. But I will still go back into dealing in detail when we're talking about Nigeria. Now, the purpose of the human being, I suggest, is utmost freedom. That the purpose of a human being is utmost freedom. He me at one of his round tables and said, tell me what you mean. It is not uh, utmost freedom. It is the purpose of man is to serve God. But I responded to him that, yes, but even for you to exercise that freedom to serve God, you still need freedom overall. However, um, the rights which are derived uh, on the basis of which I am talking about uh, uh, utmost freedom are uh, on the basis of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which already put a number of rights that human beings agreed upon in 1948 as guidance uh, to arrive at uh, rights, and then a number of freedoms, a number of freedoms that follow from there. Uh, and I list them in uh, the uh, monograph in your hand. Uh, all those freedoms in the sustainable development goal constitute the uh, uh, utmost freedom that we are talking about. Politics and its study. What has the course on interest got to do with my position as a, posi as a professor of political science and international relations at Christland University? My academic specialization is in political science and inter international relations, or if you like, political economy with practical hands-on experience and some publications that dragging me into conflict studies. Grasping national politics involves a specialized study that could be approached by a descriptive analytical method or a behavioral orientation using survey methods and statistical analysis. Such efforts benefit from received knowledge by way of reflections of many a philosopher who are paused to understand political phenomena by way of political theory. Understanding politics at the groups, classes, national and international levels is significant towards comprehending the, its study as a discipline, the study of politics. As earlier noted, the right to clean air, water, and food, other living things. In large part, air remains abundant. 
and yet to be regularly harvested. If you have been sick in the hospital and they gave you those oxygen, you will know it costs a lot. Let's think about the time when those who are controlling society start to corner air and we have to buy air in order to breathe. What would be the kind of cost? Of course, people are bound to think today, not possible. But I was a kid. Water was all over the place. We went to Owa River and drank. And then Awolowo brought pipe-borne water. It was free. We only paid taxes. But today, you buy bottled water uh, because my friend just right has to sell uh, that to you. The main responses to interest-driven demands of each individual families, groups, classes, special entities, and of course, nation states. Power is not politics. Many a time, some people will make that mistake. For me, power is an important instrument needed in the allocation of values. In effect, power is the capacity to make others do what they otherwise would not have done. And it is important in managing interests, that is, in the management of politics. You start to see the link that I'm making between interests and politics. With power, there is the element of coercion. Influence, on the other hand, appears more subtle. It is the ability to shape the stance of others through persuasion or subtle use of pressure that does not strike them. And then there is ideological suasion. Ideological suasion allows religious leaders a lot of power that receives, that receivers lack of as an influence. This explains the role of religion as it constantly goes hand in hand with those in authority in political orders. Um, authority derives from the routinized ways of doing things, even in families. Um, and the importance of authority at the national level led a political, an American political uh, scientist, David Easton, to define politics as the authoritative allocation of values. That is, people that have been put in authority are uh, allocating values, um, uh, and uh, as, a, as a result, uh, uh, things go well in society. But the fact is that values are allocated also by those who are not in authority, especially today. Um, you, you see the, the role of several multinational corporations in society, and you also see the, um, uh, the role of terrorist organizations in changing many things the way we do them. So, education is not only on the basis of um, authority. Meaning, for me, I'm departing from what David Easton is suggesting in saying that it is interest that is politics. Um, I, uh, I double into looking at the Nigerian 1999 constitution to suggest that that constitution is uh, not in the interest of Nigerians in the large part, that federal character and um, uh, uh, that is focused and a number of other things are done in a way that I, and I dealt with this in detail in a paper I published in 2018 that looked at um, the uh, uh, philosophy behind our constitution, pointing out that the interests that put our constitution together were had it to serve the dominant forces in society. And there is no doubt about the fact that the dominant forces dictates at the level of politics, but its forces is towards the majority of the people or it is in the interest of a few people. Um, it's, uh, uh, then at the international level, the question of interest is of import. It's of import in the sense that 
many nation states come together to seek to acquire several things for their respective citizens. But even when they say for their respective citizens, it's still in the interest of the dominant ones within each entity. And I pointed out the fact that at the end of the Second World War, the United States stood out as the main country ruled by the United States. Get that 85%, except you have the U.S. on board. But we never pause to look at what are the things behind some of these institutions. How did we, who were uh, uh, I uh, looked at uh, uh, the federal government of Nigeria's definition of national interest and international conflicts. When you listen to all this, you don't see where you are as an individual. How do you fissure in all this? Uh, and I will come to that. Of course, many people have been going along this line. Professor Jidea Aluko, late, uh, lists the six things that he says constitute um, our uh, uh, national interest. So, in doing a practical framework for the analysis of politics, but you'll find it in the book itself, um, yes, that's, uh, that's it, um, for a country to move forward. And the initial focus is that there must be peace and security development and humanitarianism. Of course, Kofi Annan quadruple as essential for us to understand politics, but pointing out that my addition to knowledge in that respect was that these four that they have identified can never take leadership and colonialism. And people are saying, if we have been independent for 60 years, how come you are still talking about um, colonialism as your problem when what have you done with it? I have combined the two that you have to deal with the leadership deficit and corruption. In addition, you must address the external dynamics. External dynamics did not end with several respects nexus analysis. So, the, uh, uh, but aside from the external dynamics, institutions are crucial. We lack institutions. We have not been able to build institutions if you look at political parties on the continent of Africa, it's probably only the, um, uh, 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 the South Africa's What we have are shifting a what is to be done. Um, this is a very nice title that uh, a revolutionary VI Lenin had used. And I um, have borrowed it to say that some of the values that kept society together, some of the values that allowed some of the little efforts that we achieved at the earlier stages um, were as a result of ideologies like Omoluabi or um, Ubuntu in Southern Africa. I've written about uh, uh, some of these and the importance of all this in order to create the kind of society that we are looking for. Leadership deficit, how do we address leadership deficit? My thinking is that we cannot address leadership deficit with the way things are today Ayi Kwe Ama, a Ghanaian, had written a, 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 a novel I read in uh, uh, HSC, The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born. They are still not born. So if we are trying to deal with leadership deficit, we have to look for new children that are being born, uh, and as they are being born, could be made to stay away from the pollution that parents and the rest of society confers on them in order for them to be in a position to do good for society. 
we have all come to accept that we should at all times um, that uh, many things that we de de define as human nature um, uh, uh, we, we just say them and we say it is human nature we never pause to think about how we have come to think what we think we are thinking if we pause we we'll realize that the things we are talking about are not nature as such they are nurture that had been conferred over time and have become routinized so how do we separate these children from the pollution that we have had it's a problem that I'm not able to resolve. It's a problem that Plato started with long ago. Plato said, philosopher kings, and you train them separately away, and that will build into them the spirit of catering for society at large, as opposed to the selfish self. Um, all societal interests. Um, they have spoken about the noble lie. This suggests that this suggests that Africa needs transformation away from the colonial education arrangements that have largely continued in the post-colonial period. Such cannot meet the needs of realizing transformational visionary leaders from the process of educating the children being born now. Leadership is necessary for the handling of other governance issues like corruption, ensuring of the rule of law, uh, and I pointed out in one of my studies that there is an inverse relationship between corruption and rule of law. The more of one, the less of the other. If you have more corruption, you have less rule of law. If you have more rule of law, you have less corruption. Um, and uh, as mentioned earlier on I've done a number of work on corruption uh, in corruption blooms in Nigeria which is a, a chapter in a book in honor of Professor Ileye Uyedino I looked at corruption and suggested that we over focus on politicians when talking about corruption but corruption is bigger bigger, especially today in our society, by far bigger than just looking at polit politicians because you find it in several aspects of life, whether in the private sector, among themselves, a private sector person goes to bank, wants a loan from the bank, the bank is there to give loans, but the bank demands the manager, not the bank. The manager calls you aside and said, if, you, if I don't get this or that, you aren't going anywhere. That is corruption, and that is not public. That's not the civil servant. That's not the president. That's not the governor. Then you go into the social sector. The social sector is equally corrupt. You look at it with respect to religion, especially the new Pentecostal churches. My friend was not liking me to say it, Pastor Adetola, um, the, the, those are problems that we need to accept that corruption is by far wider and we need to fight all that. Uh, 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 of course, it is my own view that President Muhammadu Buhari failed woefully on the issue of anti-corruption. He did start by wanting to implement the UN anti-corruption strategy and went further to appoint a committee and that committee did nothing till today. Now, President Tinubu is there. Let's leave our Daura uh, uh, guy to go spend some time with his uh, Katur um, uh, and leave going between Niger and uh, uh, Daura and London, uh, where he goes to meet with uh, his friend, uh, Archbishop Justin Welby. But on President Tinubu, it is too early, extraordinarily early, to give a conclusion. But I can say that from what he has done in uh, one month, of course, 
there are still cases in court. But if he continues, he will do by far better than Muhammadu Buhari, but not on corruption. Um, my president has really not been saying much about corruption. What all he has been saying is that I'm going to uh, make sure that, uh, uh, like I did with the judges in Lagos, make them comfortable. Everybody is comfortable, then their corruption will disappear. No, many countries around the world in which people are comfortable and they are still, uh, uh, still very high on the level of corruption. Um, so, maybe he might change his mind and go for uh, zero tolerance on corruption. Um, the 1999 constitution is too tolerant of corruption. Um, one of the major things about the 1999 constitution was that we are to know the assets of office holders. But what has happened? The people who are drafting the constitution could have smartly given us access so that we know. Somebody comes in and says, I have nine trillion naira as my asset. Nobody knows what this nine trillion is. The governor of Samvara or whatever. What and what is involved? So if he leaves office and takes all the money of the state, he will tell you that even he has lost part of his nine trillion when you don't have access to his. But we were to have had such access, but it was not given to us. They said that it should be given by the National Assembly. President Obasanjo presented the bill to the National Assembly. That bill has never seen the light of the day. All the presidents after him have not bothered of fulfilling that uh, constitutional injunction. I don't want to spend time on uh, that I don't have. I don't have time anymore. On federal character. Federal character is a problem for me. And it has always been I took the federal government to the Supreme Court with my daughter, Adeyinka, on the issue of federal character. Uh, but what I'm proposing is a confederation. What I'm proposing is a confederation for Nigeria. Um, uh, and uh, of course, there will be opportunity to talk more about this uh, since I have just three minutes left. Politics is interests. It is the efforts of individuals, families, communities, geopolitical entities, nation states, sub-regional blocks, uh, groupings, international. The dominant interests in such struggles build the rest of society in their image. To prevent an upturn of the social order that is beneficial to a minority of social forces and ineffective Welfareism is usually put forward to imply meeting the interests of all. In some societies, the aggregation and articulation of interests are carried out through organized arrangements called political parties. It is important that there is nothing sacrosanct on there being at least two of such political parties as the West suggests. Most of the time, the so-called two parties are fractions of the same rooted liberal orientations. Fraction, not faction, um, as my assistant insisted. Most of the time, the so-called two parties are fractions of the same rooted liberal orientation that has identical positions on the organizations of the state in the interest of the same dominant forces. On the contrary, the Chinese model of a purposeful mass single party has played a significant role in pulling citizens out of poverty. However, the focus on utmost freedom is necessarily more than ameliorating poverty. The human being in society, as pointed out earlier, require more. Ethnic groups of all kinds, referred to by some as nationalities in their own right, also play aggregation and articulation of interests. Though despised, even terrorists of different types, freedom fighters, Mandela used to be called a terrorist, freedom fighters in some situations are also modalities for the aggregation and articulation of interests. 
Nigeria is no exception to the juggling of contentions and compromises for the realization of the interests of its citizens. The country itself exists within a world order in which all countries starve to realize the interests of their citizens. A highly gullibility of Nigerians or African leaders make them erroneously expect that former imperial colonial powers will push aside their interests in extracting from the African continent to meet their own objective needs and become redeemers of Africa. It won't um, to change the situation of our people. I have tried to explore the diverse dimensions of interest at the individual complexities, the dependencies and interdependencies of interest. It is possible to strive for a future where individual aspirations, national ambitions, and global cooperation could find more convergence or alignment towards the realization of common goals. And central to this is the pursuit of utmost freedom. Political science and international relations scholars are involved in trying to unravel interests. Let's appreciate the speaker once again. Let's take our seats. Let's take our seats. So, standing of nation, not which is vote of thanks. And the job of, and that is what we are saying now that I stand on behalf of Christland University to say thank you to all of us for participating in today's meeting inaugural lectures for those of us who are physically present and those who are also online. We thank God for making today a reality for the gift of life because it is because we have life that we are participating in today's program. Thank. We also appreciate the efforts of the Board of Trustees of the University under the able leadership of our Mama, Aishi Winifred Awoshika O.O.N., who as also as part of our Mama, we welcome you. Thank you, Council, which you know that we can't hold inaugural lectures without the approval of the Governing Council. The Governing Council Chairman, Professor Ayodeji Olukoju FNA, we appreciate you, is also with us online of organizing this program. Our major concern has always been measurement and evaluation. And this is what has produced what we are witnessing today. We also have in our midst representative of the professor uh, the jamb registrar professor Oloyede. he is represented by akim i have also in our midst the representative or uh, wonderful you have participated in today at least if they ask you where are you coming from you'll be able to tell them you are from the inaugural lecture of christland university and somebody remarked yesterday, this is the only inaugural lecture with just one word, interest. So let us continue to think on to the grace of God as you return to your respective destination. Thank you all. God bless you.
remain standing until the procession leaves the assembly. Yes, after standing, then we have the national, the university anthem.